Sickness has swept through our home this past week, and it has served as a reminder of how important it is to nourish our family with healthy food daily. There was a time back when we had just a few small children that this looked like going to Costco and getting the organic fruit snacks instead of the regular fruit snacks or reading the labels on the back of the processed snacks that we were buying. Not only is this not an option for us financially now as a family of 10 who goes through a lot of food, but also I've realized that a lot of those processed snacks contain ingredients I'd rather not be feeding my children, such as preservatives and processed oils. Today, I'm going to be sharing how our family of 10 avoids packaged snacks, explain why we don't snack very often, and take you along as I make our family's favorite homemade snacks in bulk. In full disclosure, I do not believe in making a big hairy deal out of eating processed snacks or candy once in a while. I believe that if we are serving the best possible food at home and our bodies are functioning like they're supposed to, then they're able to filter out these toxins on this occasional basis. So if my kids get candy at a community event or they're eating junk food at a birthday party, I do not worry about it. Little man decided to join us, so I will be putting him in my wrap before we get cooking. But the other thing I wanted to address is this habit of snacking. Our family does not snack like the typical American family does. And if we look back just a couple of generations, we can see that not only were processed snacks not a thing, but snacking wasn't really a thing. A child might get a piece of bread if mom is pulling it out of the oven, or they might be allowed to go pick some snap peas from the garden, but there wasn't this daily afternoon snack that a lot of Americans are accustomed to. And if we look at a lot of the problems that parents are facing today, such as kids being picky eaters or not wanting to eat their meals or obesity, we can trace it back to snacking. At least I believe that's the case. So in our house, we do serve snacks. I do believe there are certain times where snacks are definitely warranted. However, it's not a daily thing and it's not something that we have on our schedule. Are there appropriate times to serve a snack? Absolutely, and we definitely snack. So we might snack when there's going to be a longer stretch than normal between meals, such as if we're going to have a later dinner that night, and so I'm going to serve an afternoon snack to tide us all over. There's also times when we're more physically active than normal, such as if we go to the beach swimming, I'll pack a snack then. And then sometimes there's just a child who's going through a growth spurt and they need extra food. There have also been times when I noticed that all of my kids get hungry and it was just because I didn't serve enough at the previous meal and so we'll make a snack at that time. Another time that we eat snacky foods is when we serve what we call coffee lunch when we're visiting. So I don't know if this is a regional term or a cultural term, but basically it means a small meal served in the evening after dinner or supper or whatever you call the evening meal. I also am not above utilizing snacks for long car trips or to keep a toddler happy during church. So what snacks do we eat? Let's start in the cellar and I will show you the things that we can up once a year so that we are always a few minutes away from a healthy snack, even if we don't have time to cook some of the other options that I'm going to be showing you later. Some of our family's favorites that we can during the preserving season are dilly beans, which are basically pickles made with beans, applesauce, pear sauce, different types of pickles, and other pickled vegetables like kohlrabi and carrots. Things like jams and sauces are also handy ingredients for everything from topping bread to making homemade Pop-Tarts or jam bars, which I will be making today. Other snacks we pull from our cellar are nuts and dried fruit. We also keep a large amount of popcorn on hand, and that is probably our most frequent snack, especially on family game nights. In our freezer, we keep homemade jerky, which I've shown how to make in a previous video, as well as a ton of frozen fruit for smoothies. Also, in the summer, our snacks are mostly fresh produce from the garden. The kids know that they're free to snack on snap peas, cherry tomatoes, and strawberries, and often they'll ask if they can have a cucumber or a pepper as well. Any fresh fruit we have on hand, like berries from picking in the summer, or apples that we keep in cold storage over the fall and winter, are also common snacks that the kids are generally free to have whenever, as long as they ask first. Okay, let's now head up to the kitchen and make some of our other favorite snacks. The first one is what we have dubbed Laura Balls. This idea came from spending a large sum of money in the past on store-bought Laura Bars. This recipe is also very flexible. Basically, it's just a combination of nuts, dates, and any desired add-ins for flavor. Our go-to combination is almonds, pecans, dates, vanilla, and chocolate chips. 
To make them, you just need a food processor. Unfortunately, I think it would be pretty hard to do this by hand. To the food processor, add one cup of almonds. We're using pre-chopped here, but it really doesn't matter. One cup of pecans and two cups of pitted medjool dates. Mix until it comes together and is no longer crumbly. If it doesn't seem to want to come together, it means you probably need to add a few more dates. Then add one teaspoon of vanilla and a handful of chocolate chips. I don't really measure here. Give it a few pulses, and then all you have left to do is to form the mixture into balls. I will warn you that if you pulse it too much, they can get pretty greasy. One way to fix this, or if you'd like them firmer, is to chill them in the fridge. They also freeze well, so today we're going to be making a bunch to put in the freezer. While it will be handy to have them pre-made, I will say that this recipe is so quick and easy for the kids to make. It's our go-to for when we need a quick snack and don't have anything prepped. The next thing we're going to make are granola bars. When I was looking for a granola bar recipe, I noticed that they all called for cereal as an ingredient, so I ended up making my own. These are our favorite and we bring them to homeschool co-op since the kids have a snack time there. To make the granola bars, start by adding to a large bowl four cups of quick oats and two and a half cups of your family's favorite add-ins. We do a half cup of unsweetened shredded coconut and two cups of chopped pecans and almonds. I'm making these in bulk today, so I'm tripling the recipe. I just pulse the nuts in my food processor to make sure I don't have any large pieces. You could also use cereal or dried fruit. Mix all of your dry ingredients until well combined and set the bowl aside. Next, line a 9 by 13 pan with aluminum foil or parchment paper and set that aside. Now grab a small saucepan. To the saucepan, add one and a half cups of peanut butter, two heaping spoonfuls of coconut oil, one and a quarter cup of honey, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. For the coconut oil, you can use refined or unrefined, but we choose unrefined for the extra coconut taste. If you can't have peanut butter, feel free to substitute for the nut or seed butter of your choice. Heat these ingredients on low, stirring continuously until melted completely, well blended and smooth. Then quickly and carefully take that peanut butter mixture and pour it into the bowl of dry ingredients, mixing as you go. Continue stirring until all of the dry ingredients are wet. Finally, add a few handfuls of chocolate chips. I don't have an exact amount for you here because it's really just a personal preference. Stir until the chocolate chips are evenly distributed, but just keep in mind that if you overmix it or your mixture is still really hot, the chocolate chips are likely to melt and then you will just end up with chocolate granola bars. We've done this and they were actually very good that way, but I had to convince my kids that there were in fact chocolate chips in there before they had a chance to taste them. As soon as your mixture is ready, press it into that baking dish that you prepared. I like to use the back of a measuring cup to make sure it's nice and compacted. If you skip this step, they will crumble when you try to take them out. Refrigerate for one hour, then cut into bars and remove. If you need to speed up the process, you can place them in the freezer to harden quickly. I have done this the morning of co-op and it worked great. If you won't be eating them right away, you can also place them individually on a pan or baking sheet to flash freeze them. This will make them hard enough to put in a bag or container in the freezer without them sticking together and you will be able to just remove however many you need at a time. The next snack I'm going to make is another type of bar called a jam bar. I had heard about this recipe last year when we had a ton of jam to use up before the next canning season and I was so excited because it turns out we didn't use as much jam as I had thought and this was a great use for it. You can use any jam or fruit sauce for this or even pie filling. I'm going to double the amounts I'm going to tell you, but if you don't have eight kids, you might want to stick with the original amount because it does make quite a few bars. Start by preheating your oven to 350. Then mix together four cups of flour. You can even use a gluten-free flour mix, two cups of rolled oats, one cup of sugar. I'm using brown sugar here, but I like to use maple sugar too. You can just adjust this depending on how sweet your jam or filling is too. And one teaspoon of baking soda. Mix that together well and then add in two cups of melted salted butter, mixing until the dry mixture is completely moistened with the butter. Next, press one and a half cups of the mixture into a parchment paper lined baking sheet. At first it looked like it wasn't enough for two full pans here, but it ended up being plenty. You can use whatever pans you have available as long as they have sides on them. Then spread three to four cups of jam or whatever your filling is across the top of the oat mixture. Sprinkle the rest of the oat mixture evenly on top 
and then bake for about 40 to 45 minutes. Make sure to let them cool completely before cutting or they will just fall apart. Then you can eat them or what I'm doing is cutting them, flash freezing them so that they are solid, and then putting them in bags for the freezer to have on hand. The next snack we made on this day was fruit snacks. This is something kids like to help with, and I like that homemade fruit snacks are a great way to get the health benefits of gelatin and fruit or veggie juices in them while they see it as a special treat. I won't go through the process because I do have another video that shows this, and the written recipe is on my blog. Okay, up next are Pop-Tarts, which are another fun way to use up jam. Today, I'm making strawberry flavored. These come out looking like they took a lot of effort, but they're actually really simple to make. You start by making a pie crust, which I like to do in my food processor. So I'm going to add two and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon of salt, six tablespoons of cold cubed butter, and two thirds cup of lard or shortening to the food processor, and then pulse it until it looks well mixed. Then I'm going to add about a quarter cup of ice water, one tablespoon at a time until the mixture holds together. And because I'm making these in bulk, I'm going to do this process two more times. You could also do this in a stand mixer. The dough should then get split in half, formed into disc shapes, wrapped in plastic wrap, and refrigerated for at least two hours to firm up. I used this time to get laundry switched and some math done with the kids. After that time is up, I'm going to let the dough sit at room temperature for about 15 minutes and preheat the oven to 350. I'm also going to mix up an egg wash. To do this, add two eggs, and one tablespoon of milk to a small bowl and whisk it together. Then I'm going to roll out half of the pie dough into a large rectangle about 1 8 inch thick. I'm doing this on parchment paper so that the dough doesn't stick to my counter. Then use a pizza cutter to cut the dough into approximately three by four rectangles. Just keep in mind that if your rectangles are various sizes and shapes, it becomes more difficult to make pretty pop tarts. Transfer half of the rectangles to a parchment paper lined baking sheet. Now start adding a heaping tablespoon of jam to each of those rectangles. Spread it out, leaving about 1 4th inch rim around the edges. Brush the egg wash around the edges and then put another rectangle on top. Then do a little egg wash on the tops. Use a fork to make a few holes in the top and to crimp the edges closed around the perimeter. Just don't press so hard that you make the edges too thin or they will cook too fast and become brittle. Bake the Pop-Tarts for about 20 to 25 minutes or until the tops begin to brown. While these are baking, repeat the process for the second half of your dough. When they come out of the oven, let them cool on the pan for a few minutes to harden up and then let them finish cooling on a wire cooling rack. After all of your Pop-Tarts are cooled, it's time to glaze them. This is my kids' favorite part. For the glaze, whisk three quarters cup of powdered sugar, a tablespoon of milk, and a quarter teaspoon of vanilla until well blended. Add additional milk if needed until it is spreadable. Spread the glaze on each Pop-Tart and let them sit until hardened. Like with my other snacks, I will flash freeze these and store them in bags in the freezer. When we want these for a snack, all I have to do is throw them in a hot oven for a few minutes. The last homemade snack we're making today are potato chips. These are simple to make, but they don't last very long, so plan to eat them within a few days. Start by preheating your oven to 425. Then to make them, you simply peel and slice russet potatoes very thin, adding them to a pot of cold water as you go. After you're done, let the potato slices soak for another 20 minutes. It's best to use a mandolin for this to get nice, even, thin slices. Next, pat the potato slices dry and add them to a large bowl. Drizzle with olive oil and season however you like, and then toss them to make sure that all of the sides are covered. I'm just doing salt today. Then lay them on a parchment paper lined baking sheet in a single layer and bake for about 20 minutes, flipping halfway through. All right, that's it. Hopefully you found some healthy snack ideas that you can make for your family. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you here next week.